Hello. Good evening. How are you? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. How was your day, Walter? Amazing, teacher. Amazing. Wow. Why is that? What happened? I'm doing a lot of things. I felt so energy today. I feel so good. I don't know. It's all well fine with my health every day. Okay. Yeah. And try. I uh, 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 I was trying to 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 felt a lot of energy in my in my life because sometimes I feel I don't know what happened to me depressed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He affect me and some uh, illness I had. I don't know, but uh, I'm feel so good. Okay. And even though even though I was uh try to memorize and practice some vocabulary, I found on a web page and give me some vocabulary using images and and flashcards and another things is good. Okay, that's great. Great to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, are, are you doing exercise? Are you walking? Yeah, yeah. I walking around 30 minutes every day. Um, I routine exercise every day. Okay, yeah. that's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and do you walk near your house? Do you go to the park? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's normal to walk um in a Quiteño Stadio stadium. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 30 or 45 minutes every day. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. That that helps a little bit of walking, concentration. Yeah. Do you listen to music when you are walking? Um, I don't know. Happened to me. I felt I felt distracted when I use uh, I'm listening music music for I, I don't know when cross the, the street. Oh my god, uh, probably I have an accident, but I don't like it to listen music when when I when I walk. Okay, all right, yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah. good. Well, we're gonna go ahead and continue from yesterday. As you know, welcome everyone else as well. Uh, today we are continuing with our writing. And the difficult part about the writing, more than anything, is just the time that you have to get everything organized and to reach the minimum standards. Now, of course, some people do less than 300 or less than 200. And it's, it's, not, the, it's not only 300. It's the quality of your writing, right? So if you have less than 300, but you have a good vocabulary, good structures, a correct grammar, it's not a problem. The problem is that if you have a lot of mistakes, if you don't have good punctuation, not good ideas, no good paragraph, and you have a little bit of writing, it's more difficult to give you a good score. That's yeah. why you have to try to balance both of them, okay? Yeah. So yesterday, we're gonna watch the video one more time that we watched yesterday to help us get an idea of how the independent writing questions is scored, how we can improve it, and what we can do, okay? Let's move on now to the last section of this course, the writing section. We'll go over writing question two, the independent writing question. We will see how the question is structured, how to approach the question, how your response is score, and we'll give you some tips for improving your writing skills. So here's generally what question two will look like. For this task, you're presented with a question and you have 30 minutes to write your response. There's no maximum length for your essay, but a good response is usually at least 300 words. So what is the question asking you to do? Question structure, 30 minutes, 300 or more words. The independent writing question will ask your opinion on an issue. So often you'll get a question such as, do you agree or disagree? Which would you prefer? Or do you support or oppose this idea? Question structure, your opinion on an issue. Do you agree or disagree? Which would you prefer? Do you support or oppose this idea? Use specific reasons and examples. Approach tips. Make an outline. 
Some people like to travel with a companion. Other people prefer to travel alone. Which do you prefer? Don't memorize. Okay. So let me go back to this part, which is usually a pretty important part. The reason that it's very important is because um, here you have to judge and you have to measure your time. If you are a person who is very uh, time consuming and make an outline and you're doing this and you say, ah, okay, paragraph one, this is my idea. This is my idea for number two. And number one, this is my main. If you make an outline, but you take a long time, don't make an outline. If you are a person that make an outline in two minutes, then it's good because the outline is only an outline is not your writing. It's only how do you approach this topic? So for example, here, some people like to travel with a, with a companion. Others prefer to travel alone. Okay. So what is my first paragraph? My first paragraph in my outline. Okay. Uh, traveling with or without a partner. Second paragraph, my option, I prefer it alone, or I prefer with others. Then the third, why? Examples for my real life. How do I support this? Uh, the third paragraph, what are the negative aspects of the other answers? Why the other answer is not a good answer? And finally, the last paragraph, why again, my option. That's it. Two minutes. Okay, I have my outline. That's it. My outline, begin with the question, give my opinion, give supporting for why the other is not correct, and final conclusion. But that is for me a quick outline, not an outline where I begin writing, oh, sentence one, this, sentence two, oh, my trip to Mexico, oh, I put my trip to Mexico, oh, and I had to, no, this is not an outline, this is your writing. Outline is only your main ideas and how you're going to structure it. So if for you, you don't have a lot of experience with an outline, it's okay. Try to get a little bit of more practice of how to organize your structures. You can use the basic foundation, which is question, your opinion, the opposite opinion, and conclusion. This is always okay. This is always a common structure, right? Do you like pupusas or, uh, do you like pupusas or nuegados? Which is better? Okay. The first, typical Salvadorian foods that people eat. Ah, paragraph one, good. Two, my preference. I prefer pupusas, what kind, where from, what are the places that I like? Okay, so in my outline, I put what, okay, where, when. Ah, in the third one, uh, dislike. Why I dislike Nuegados, why I don't agree with this, why this is not the best option. And the last one, my conclusion. Super fast outline but because it's a basic outline it's a basic structure only to help me stay organized to get the most points that's the idea of the tip for the outline okay let's continue watching other people prefer to travel alone which do you prefer don't memorize scoring criteria a scored zero to five development organization language use okay this is what i mentioned Number one, organization. We have organization. Boom, we can get the points. Super easy to get the point for organization. Question, my opinion, why I don't agree with the other opinion. Conclusion, organization, ta, 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 ta. Is structure, always the same structure. But the difference, development and language. That vocabulary that Sandra has is not the same vocabulary that Yancy has. The vocabulary that Yancy has is not the same that Walter. Walter's opinion is not the same as Jenny's opinion. This is where it's different. You can organize the same. I can give you the outline, but the writing is not going to be the same writing. Why? Language use and development. Do you use all of these different structures to get the maximum five points? The objective is to try to get those five points. Before the test, make sure you understand what the raters are looking for and how each question is scored. The essay in the writing section will each be given an overall score from zero to five. For question two, the independent writing question, the raters are looking for three main things.
So what are they looking for? How well you address the topic, how well your details, examples, reasons support your ideas, okay? So let's take a look at that one more time. How well you address the topic. This means, are you on topic? Do you do they ask you about eh, pupusas and nuegados and you talk about tacos? For example, do you stay focused? That's how you address the topic, right? Eh, do you have details, examples, reasons? So the details, what kind are you talking about? What are the examples from your experiences or from the things in general that you know? And what are your logical reasons? Now, it doesn't have to be correct, right? It doesn't have to be correct. It only has to be logical and with good English, okay? So you are never going to get asked, for example, you are not going to get asked political questions. You are not going to get asked religious questions. You are going to get asked academic questions. You are going to get asked questions for high, for university studies, okay? What is better, uh, having, um, having a park or having a, a recreational center where people can play indoors, okay? This is part of the life in the university. Oh, your ideas is this, this, and this, your experience. It's better to go to a stadium. It's better to go outside. What is the difference? All is going to be in the details and your reasons. This is where you get the most points. If you have good details and you have good support. If you say the park, okay. But you explain why the park. You explain what is the best. The same for the stadium. That is where you get the most points. Remember this part that we talked about yesterday is not one paragraph. It is an essay. You need to have minimum three paragraphs, usually four paragraphs. The paragraphs, introduction, body, conclusion, or like a movie, beginning, middle, and end. That's the idea of writing paragraphs. The transitions. The transitions are how do you change from one to the next topic. Not you are talking and then you're completely different about the others. No. Transitions, for example, however, furthermore, although, on the other hand, the, the transitions, right? This is the idea. What do you think about Bitcoins? Oh, well, in El Salvador, we use the dollar. However, Bitcoin has, ah, my transition. This is the changing topics, going to the other side. And then, of course, the last part, of course, we mentioned support the topic, but avoid redundancy. This means please do not repeat yourself. Do not repeat the same vocabulary or the same idea again and again and again. If you support, you need to give one example for support, a different example, a different detail, but not the same example again and again and again and again. This is the idea for re avoid redundancy. Any questions in this moment? It's clear how to organize and improve your writing. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Yes. Yes, yes teacher. Great. Now, in language use, they talk about sentence structure, word choice, vocabulary, and use of grammar. The easiest one to manage, the easiest one to manage is sentence structure. If your sentence has five words, it's too small. If your sentence has five words, I like to eat pupusas. This is, is correct sentence, but it's not at a TOEFL level. It's not university level. So number one, the easy sentence structure. Look for longer sentences that include why, where, when. For example, I like to eat pupusas from Olocuilta because they are the most unique. And then, ah, this is a long sentence. This is correct sentence structure. Number two, word choice. Here is a little bit more difficult because if the topic is new for you and you don't have 
specific vocabulary for that topic, you need to use general vocabulary. And maybe you don't have a lot of vocabulary or a lot of words that you can use, right? If we're talking about maybe the movies, the cinema, but you don't know about director or actors or, a, um, I don't know, uh, um, location scouts. If you don't have this vocabulary, you have to use general words. So this is a little bit harder. The grammar, it's not a problem if you remember the last five minutes of your writing is for grammar. The last five minutes is for check the punctuation. The last five minutes is to check your spelling. So don't worry about the grammar. Don't worry about the spelling. You worry about the writing. Writing, my organization, my ideas, my examples. In the last five minutes, then you go back. Oh, wait, this word is not spelled correctly. Oh, this word, I need to put the period. This, in the last five minutes, you correct. But the first 25 minutes, 25 minutes, your ideas on paper. That is the idea that you need to focus on. Okay? All right. Skill building tips. Read opinion essays and write about them. Time yourself and plan. Write and revise in 30 minutes. Tips. Learn how to find and correct grammar mistakes. Okay. This part where it says time yourself, plan. This is the idea of organizing your first one or two minutes, your outline, writing, 23 minutes of writing, and then revise is the last five minutes last five, three to five minutes. The idea of revise is only to check the punctuation, check the capital letters, check the spelling, look at the grammar. Is not the most important, but it is important because if you don't have good punctuation spelling, you lose points. That's why you need to have a little bit of time to check all of those things, okay? Teacher. Yes, Jenny. The uh, the essay include in, in the thirty minutes the five minutes to check the mistake. Correct. So it's not you have thirty minutes plus. Hold on. No, it's thirty minutes complete for everything. Thirty uh -huh. minutes for outline, writing, and revising. You uh -huh. have three activities in thirty minutes. That's why I suggest the outline, one, two minutes maximum, only ideas, paragraph one, two, three, four, what I want to say. Then immediately, two, 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 right, 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 for 23 minutes. And the last five minutes, I go back. Why? Because Jenny, many, many, many students I'm going to be honest. Many, uy, ¿cómo se deletrea? Ay, no me acuerdo cómo se escribe. And like five minutes only trying to remember how to spell the word, how to write the word. No. The important is write the word. Later, you check the spelling. Later, you check the punctuation. But first, get your ideas on the paper. And then you check. Don't use a lot of time. Uy, how do I spell? Uy. Is this word? No. This is the not the moment. This is the last five minutes. Is that okay, Jenny? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Excellent. So 30 minutes for all of the for all. for all the activities. Correct. Remember, when you practice, you may find that you're making the same kind of grammar mistakes over and over. So learn how to correct them. Then, when you write your essay, leave a few minutes to go back and make those corrections. And even in the tip, like I say, everybody has a different idea. Some people say, oh, it's enough with two minutes. It's enough with three minutes. For me, I prefer to have less writing, but perfect writing, than to have a lot of writing with mistakes. That's why for me, I think five minutes is enough time, three to five minutes. I prefer five minutes 
to go back and I begin reading and I listen. I read not only for the grammar, but how does it sound? For me, I read and I prefer to read out loud. That way I can imagine if somebody read my paper, how does it sound to them? And I, ooh, this word, no, no good sentence. This sentence changed the order. And for me, I like the five minutes because I feel confident to get better scores. So I recommend the same idea. Give yourself time to correct your common mistakes. Any questions before we begin today's first writing assignment? No. Okay, let's take a look. Yancy, what is the first step before we begin writing? What is the first thing that we do? Oh, sorry, teacher. Okay, I repeat the question, please. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yancy, yes. what is the first thing we do when we begin our writing activity? What do we do? Yes, make an outline. Correct. You can make an outline in your mind or make an outline on paper, but have an idea how you want to write. This is number one. Walter, what is part two? What is part two? Organize the ideas. And after you organize the ideas? Um, oh, my God. No problem, no problem. Irena, after we organize our ideas, what should we do? Um, um, sentence structure. Correct. Then you start writing and worry about the ideas. Create your sentences. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about punctuation. That's why you have five minutes. In this moment, in step two, only the important is your ideas, put sentence structure, get your ideas, get your vocabulary, the idea to start explaining yourself. And the last step, step three, before the time finishes, what do we have to do, Sandra? Before before finishing? Mm -hmm. Well, we have to, um, to review our, our uh, our mistakes in grammar and, and review all the all the all the writings we have done exactly. exactly and before finishing you say oh i finished no i finished writing now i have to start review i have to start checking spelling punctuation grammar paragraphs sentence structure this is my last five minutes right yes. okay so Let's begin. Today we have a writing. Today we're going to put, I want you to write in today in the chat, here in the chat. If you finish, you write your paragraph. If you finish paragraph one, put it in the chat. If you finish paragraph two, put it in the chat. Okay. But why today in the chat? That way you feel the pressure of having to write on the computer. Because I know that some of you, you write like this, do, 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 and you have to get 300 words. You have to do 300 words. Now, remember, here's the part. In your computer, you have spell check, you have word, you have others. In the exam, all is blocked. All is blocked. No internet, no Google, no translator. In when you enter, you have to give the program access and the program block everything. If you don't know how to spell, you don't know how to spell. If there is no, if you don't know how to say, you don't know how to say. So today we're going to practice in the chat. Do, 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 do. Ah, I, here is my paragraph. Okay, enter. I continue writing. Do, 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 do. Paragraph number two, enter and continue. It's clear. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Here is today's question. Okay, question for today. Compare and contrast your way of life with that of your parents. Which way of life do you think would be more satisfying to future generations? 
Use specific reasons and examples to support your opinion. You have 30 minutes beginning now.
Teacher, I have uh, I I have to send the first paragraph. Yes, put in the chat. chat. Yes, put in the chat. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Three more minutes. How many minutes, teacher? Three minutes. Oh my God. Okay, okay.
Okay. Now you have the last five minutes to check your spelling. Look at your spelling, your punctuation, your writing, your vocabulary, past tense, present tense. Remember, take five minutes, look at your writing and see what you can correct. One minute.
Okay, the time is up. Okay, very nice, I'm glad. Let's take a look at some of the issues that we need to fix and we can improve better. Very good in writing. I see most of you have, uh, you are pushing yourself to write more, give more. I feel that today you wrote a lot more. There's a couple of aspects that we have to be careful with. Number one is you must have an introduction. The majority of you do not have an introduction. You only begin writing, okay? What is the introduction? The introduction is what you're going to talk about. So as an example, okay, you are going to compare your life and your parents' life. But what are you going to compare? This is what you didn't put in paragraph one. So for structure, you lost points. Why? Because in the structure, like at the university writing or essay, what are you going to compare? Education, work, health, science, technology. What are you going to compare between you and your parents' life? Are you going to compare economic situation? Are you going to compare a physical location, geography? Are you going? So you need to put this in the first paragraph. Paragraph number two, then you start to explain about it, right? This is the parts that we're having a little bit of confusion with. Also, very good. And I like that you are organizing paragraphs, most of you. Very good. This is the most important. Try to get it. Be careful with the ideas. Um, remember, I know some of you only have like one sentence or two sentences, but I want to show you the question. Okay. Let's take a look at the question. Compare and contrast the way of life with that of your parents. Okay. Which way of life do you think would be more satisfying for the future? So many of you, oh, you compare and contrast your way of life with your parents, the family, the health, the education, the things, oh, or, or exercise. And then only one sentence. And I think this is good for the future generations. This is not enough to answer the complete sentence, to answer the complete questions and to get all of the points. That's the part where you have to be careful. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Yes, Irena. I could then uh, paste my text because he said that it's too long. May I read? Yes, Irena. Um, just go ahead. Read it, Irena. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the way I live is not really different from, from than the one my parents live. However, there are surely some small differences which I think are caused by the higher piece of the, of the life. I live in a generation with more technolo technolo technological opportunities. First of all, I use mobile and online communication all the time. This way I am informed of news in the world and in my friends' circle almost in real time. On the other side, my parents use older technologies for getting information. They read the news from the day before in the newspaper and get letters from their friends. In today's world, in which there are many opportunities for fast information flow, I think the better way to live is my way because I am always up to date. That is why I think future generations will do the same as me so that they can be up to date as well. Second, people today do lots of sport in the spare time. And I say people because I don't. In order to compensate for the little body movement in, movement in the office. On the contrary, my parents do not do sports, although they do not move more than I do during the day. I think future generations will realize that they have to find a way to keep their body healthy in a world where they barely move due to the technology doing all, do, all the move needed. In conclusion, I think the way I live will be more satisfying for future generation because it utilizes it utilizes the available technology better and healthier. Very nice, Irana. Very nice. Um, great job in 
integrating the idea not only one time or two, but many times the idea for your past, present, and future generations. This is better. This is much better instead of not only contrasting the past generation and this generation, mm -hmm. but also integrating how this aspect for economic or for technology affect the future, how the aspect for health affect the future. Mm -hmm. This is the best way. So these are more complicated because you only have, you have to organize yourself to include all of the answer. And here it looked like only two things, mm -hmm. my, my parents' life and my life, but no, it's three things. I have to compare three, past, present, and I need to compare the future. Imagine okay. how it's going to be the future. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Don't worry. We learn from each other and every time we get better and better. Tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and continue practicing. We have more writing tasks and almost finished the class in two days. So okay. a lot of writing today and tomorrow. A lot of writing. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Have a nice night. Bye. Bye. Good night.